Hi, I'm Lauren from the Pikes Peak Library District, and today we're going to be learning a little bit about stop motion. Now, for those of you who don't know, stop motion is a type of animation that's done by stringing a series of still images together. Um, it works kind of similar to a flip book, but with physical objects instead of sketches. So you'll take a picture of this mouse, for example, in one frame, move it a tiny amount, take another picture, move it a tiny amount, take another picture, and when you string all of those pictures together, it's going to look like the mouse is moving on its own. So you may have seen this in movies like Coraline or Kubo and the Two Strings, which do this with clay figurines. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to know how to mo model clay um, to make some simple stop motion videos. You can do it using um, figurines or household objects, or if you want a little bit more control and ability to manipulate the things you're filming, you could use something like wire or pipe cleaners or um, whatever you have on hand so that you can um, move them into different poses. Now, stop motion can be really fun to get started with, um, and you only need really something that can take pictures and something to take pictures of. But it's even easier if you have a device um, like a tablet or a smartphone that can download apps from the App Store because there are some great free stop motion apps out there that do a lot of the work of stringing those videos together um, for you and that make it easier to edit them without needing fancy editing software. So if you have a tablet or a smartphone, the app that I'm going to be showing today is one that's free in both the Google Play Store and the Apple Store and it's called Stop Motion Studio and it looks like a video camera with a blue background. So if you find that app and download it, we're going to go ahead and go through the steps of setting it up. Now, if you don't have a device that can download apps, or if you want to get really um, more in depth with it and a little bit fancier, you can actually check out cameras from um, the studio at Sand Creek Library or at Studio 21C using your library card. Uh, and I'll have the link and the information for how you can reserve that equipment down in the description. You can also, if you're really committed to this and you have a great idea for a project, you can book time in Studio 21C and you could use the equipment they have in the studio to film your own stop motion video in there and use the editing software at Library 21C to then edit your video. But today in this video, we're just going to be covering the very basics of how stop motion animation works and some tips and tricks for getting started with it. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. First things first, you're going to go into your app store and you're going to download Stop Motion Studio. Uh, that's just one of the many free apps that are out there. If there's another one that you'd prefer, you can use that instead. Um, but it'll look like a blue camera icon. Um, and when you download it, it'll take you to a screen that has, um, that says new movie on it and that has um, a sample movie as well. So what you'll do is you'll click that new movie button and then you're just going to real quick get some settings ready um, to make sure that you're ready to start filming. So first things first, you can click the gear icon on the bottom left and then you can click on the first icon there that looks kind of like a speedometer. You can see that it's automatically set to five and that refers to five frames per second. Now to make our stop motion video look very smooth, uh, what we're going to be doing is upping that to somewhere between 9 to 12 frames per second. Once you've changed that, click the done button on the top right corner, and now there's just one more thing to do. Okay, so now that you've got your app set up and you're ready to start taking photographs, the first thing you want to do is to make sure you've got your scene ready to go. Now, um, I said before that I had molded pipe cleaners into little figurines and that I was using a um, figurine that I had in my house, this little wooden mouse. You could use pipe cleaners, you could use wire, you could use household objects, uh, whatever you want to um, use for your video, just come up with kind of a storyboard in your mind of what's going to happen from frame to frame. Now, you have to keep in mind it's going to take, you know, 10 photographs to get one second of footage here. So you're going to really need to be making these teeny little incremental movements and it'll take a lot longer than you might think. Um, but it can be a really relaxing thing to do. So don't rush. Um, just keep in mind what kind of motion you want to have 
If you want it to be smooth motion, you need to be making these really tiny movements in between each frame and maybe even taking a couple pictures of it in the same position um, to really make sure it doesn't look choppy. But if you want to look like it's jumping, you may move it really fast, a really long distance in one frame um, to give it that effect of it moving really quickly. So that's just something to keep in mind. So in my case, I've got my figurine ready to go. I've got my mouse ready to go. And I'm putting them on a table here and getting it set up. The next thing I'm going to do is figure out where I want my device to be. So in my case, I'm going to have um, my phone leaned against a stack of books so that I get a nice frame of the mouse and the man. <laughs> and I will um, make sure that my phone is stable where it is. Because if I'm holding it by hand, my phone is going to be shaking. But we don't want our pictures to be shaking. We want just the objects to be moving in the frame. The frame should be still. So in order to do that, you could use a tripod or you could, like me, use a stack of books. Uh, whatever you have on hand that works, just make sure you're not holding it by hand because that can really um, mess up your video. Now once you're ready and your camera's set up and your scene is set up, you're ready to start filming and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now that I've got my scene set up the way I want it to be, I'm in the camera mode and I'm ready to start filming. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this red button and it's going to take a picture. And then I'm going to move my mouse a little bit and take another picture. But you can see that that's moving the camera a little bit, right? Every time I tap the screen. So instead I'm going to go to this clock button and I'm going to change it to take pictures on a five second delay. And I'll wait for it to stop moving. I'll start it and here we go. Took a picture took a picture and you know if my hands get caught in any of these frames I can go in and delete them afterwards. The important thing is just to make sure that I'm moving very gradually and that I have a sense of what I want to be moving in each frame. And sometimes I'm going to leave it to take a couple pictures of the same scene but afterwards I'm actually able to go ahead and duplicate some. So if I want to have, you know, a couple of frames of this mouse in this position, I can do that as well. So we have this person turning now. The mouse is getting closer. And now let's go ahead and in this next scene, I'm going to have it do this really big leap and tackle him. And I want to take a couple pictures of that. And then I'm going to show it down back on the ground. And it's going to run away. And you can see I'm making these really gradual motions. I could honestly be moving it even less than this. But we just want to make sure that when this is all strung together, that it has a natural look to it. And this is a very simple scene, right? There's nothing too fancy going on here. But you could really get more complicated with this and you could add more motion. You could be raising them up on platforms. You could have objects in the background. Um, and you could be manipulating the limbs a lot more. I really only turned my pipe cleaner man, but I could have had him waving his arms around. Okay, so we finished. I'll let it take another shot here. I think it might be funny to move him onto his side for the last frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, we're done. Hit that stop button. Go back. And now you can see if I hit this play button in the bottom right, it will actually play our scene. Oops, see I caught my hand in that. So instead I'm going to go in, I'm going to scroll through. And that frame that had my hand in it, there it is. I'm just going to delete it. And I could duplicate some of these to make it run smoother. Um, I could add more audio to them, I could add um, special effects, I could add filters, and those can all be found in um, the different menus in this app. So if you hit this question mark button, it'll pop up all these different options, and you can just go in and play with voiceover, adding audio, adding images, 
um, to really get your video ready. Once you're happy with how it looks, and I'm pretty happy with this one, you'll hit the back button. You'll grab your movie here just by pressing on it, and you can see there is this little button at the top that looks like three dots connected by two lines. Click that, and you can choose how to export it. I might want to export this as a movie or as an animated GIF or just as a series of images because maybe I want to edit it in some free software like um, the Photos app for Windows afterwards. In my case, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to export it as a movie and I could either save it to my device and transfer it over or I could upload it straight into YouTube or another app like that on my device. So that's really up to you with what's easiest for you. Uh, in my case, I'll probably upload it straight to YouTube. All right, I hope you had fun making this video with us today and that you learned a little bit about how easy stop motion can be to get started with. Uh, so if you made a video and you'd like to share it, please tag us um, hashtag PPLD Take and Make and we would love to uh, take a look at your finished videos. If you want to get a little bit more information on stop motion and some more advanced techniques, I have some great links down in the description. One is an intro to stop motion video series through lynda.com. That's free to you with your library card. You'll just put in your card number, log in, and you can watch it. And it has great tips and tricks, um, both on the basics of stop motion, but also on some things like creating a background, um, dealing with the lighting, um, some great video editing techniques that can really be helpful to you. And if you're looking for some books to kind of dig in more to the advanced part of stop motion, uh, we have some great ones at the library that you could put on hold. One is called um, Frame by Frame Stop Motion by Tom Gasick, and that really digs into the editing and software aspect of uh, putting together a stop motion video. So if you want to get more in depth into you know, editing after the fact, that's a wonderful resource that kind of takes you through the steps. If you're more interested in kind of the puppetry aspect, or you'd like to try out claymation, so doing stop motion with these clay figurines that you create, there's a wonderful book called The Advanced Art of Stop Motion Animation um, by Ken Preed. So those, I both have a link to both of those down in the description here, uh, and I definitely recommend putting them on hold and taking a look at them if you're interested in learning a little bit more about stop motion. So I hope you enjoyed this project today, and hopefully you've discovered a new hobby. Have a wonderful day!